I want to introduce you all to Bob Doyle. He's uh, best known for his contribution to the film and the book, The Secret, as a law of attraction expert and a coach. He's been teaching these principles through various methods since 1998. He's driven by his passion for creative self-expression, and his work is heavily focused on helping people decide who they want to be and how they want to express themselves. Recently, Bob's attention has shifted from the metaphysical aspects of the law of attraction or reality creation process to a more grounded and biological look at what controls our experiences, namely our brain. Bob, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Thanks. Guys, it's great to be here. Thank you. Awesome, man. We're excited having you here. An actual movie star, Max, we yeah. got on the show. We're so, big time now. It's, all, it's all uphill from look here. Out, look out, world. Yeah. We're coming. We're coming. So, um, Bob, can we start out with and tell us, what is The Secret? Well, so The Secret, uh, it obviously, is the film and the book. And it was uh, it was sort of designed to sort of introduce the world to this concept of the law of attraction to those who had not ever heard of it before. It's a principle that's been discussed for ages, hundreds and probably thousands of years, but brought into the mainstream for sure by the vision of Rhonda Byrne, who created this film, to introduce people to the fact that we have a lot more control over basically our experience of reality than we are taking. And the secret is uh, really focused on the law of attraction, talks a lot about energy and vibration, getting into alignment, visualization, all of those things. And this was, a, this was the law of attraction was something that I had found for myself a few years before The Secret had tremendous breakthroughs in my life. It really changed everything. And so I got passionate about teaching it. And uh, and that's how, you know, so I put together a little program that all led me into being involved with The Secret in general. Bob, it's a, it sounds a little bit like uh, some magic or mysticism. Do you have to believe in it for it to work? Yeah. So here, the reason, as you said, that I am shifting away from teaching law of attraction is questions like that, that I have been getting for 20 years. And the problem with the questions is not that there's anything wrong with asking questions. It's just that it takes the focus off of what's really doing the work here. What I have found of 20 years of teaching this is that people are trying to use the law of attraction to, you know, affect the outside world. Like, I want that person to feel this. I want this person to give me this. I want all of this external stuff and they're not focusing on what's really important which is themselves who do they want to be because when you look at your life and everything in it it's a result everything you have don't have whatever is a result of all the actions you've taken and, and who you have been being what the meaning you've made out of life and then how that's driven you into action or taken you out of it so if you want different results in your life you need to change who you're being and when you change who you're being, your actions, your emotions, all these things that affect the law of attraction just happen automatically so that people don't have to freaking obsess about the ins and outs of the law of attraction techniques, because that is what I have seen people wasting decades of their life trying to figure it out, mm-hmm. trying to figure out the magic part, trying to, they're using magical thinking around something that doesn't, that isn't magic and because they're not getting these magical results, they're getting depressed or they're thinking that this doesn't work or whatever. So that's why I have shifted and say, hey, let's just look at the science. Where is reality actually created? And like you said that I said, it is the brain. That's when we make meaning out of every moment. So that's where I'm putting focus on let's analyze the gap between who you're being now and the results you're getting and who you would have to be to get the results that you really want. And when you do that, then the law of attraction sort of works automatically and there's no magic to it at all so when you talk about the law of attraction for those that don't know um what what is what's the law of attraction that's um can you connect that for us sure the way that i define it and have been defining it for you know the entire time is that because you'll hear a lot of things like like attracts like and very simplified things like that and from the from the true what the law of attraction is, it's, it's basically that we are attracting into, experience, into our experience of life those things that we are in vibrational resonance with. So if we're, at, if we're operating at a particular frequency or whatever, then we're going to tend to attract those situations, those people that are in a similar frequency. But see, the problem with that is, although that is, there is science behind all of that, There's, there is science behind all of it, it just is too freaking intangible for people. And it's not necessary to understand or believe it, like you said, because, look, people have succeeded and made incredible lives for themselves since the beginning of time without any understanding of what the law of attraction is. There is no requirement that you that you understand this. And people spend years and years trying to master the law of attraction when they should be mastering themselves. 
That's interesting because you, you, you spend your early years growing up and wondering what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to make out of your life? And, you know, if you're not sure and you want to understand what you want out of life, how can you use these principles? Well, I, I don't know that I would use these principles to determine that necessarily. I mean, you look out in the world and you find your inspiration. Who is out there doing something that stirs something within you? What is it in life that inspires you? What do you feel called to do? What lights you up? What do you like doing? This is another thing. People get very, very freaking obsessed with what is my purpose? Why am I here? You get to decide. That's the thing. And if you're spending all of your life waiting for some sign or somebody to tell you this is why you are here, then you're going to be searching for a really long time because you get to decide that. Your brain is ready to be programmed and wired however you'd like. It will take time. It will take action. It will take consistency. But you can be who you want and get the results that you want. Hmm. It sounds, you know, the way you put it, it seems so simple. Do you often still get doubters? Not since I've been talking about brain rewiring. See, so the, the, the principle about, uh, so I talk about neuroplasticity, which is our ability for, to change our brain. You know, we've been, we've been learning and changing the structure of our brain since the day we were born. We've been taking in all this information. It's creating these neural pathways which create our belief system, the lens through which we see the world, and everybody is as different. That's why everybody sees the truth a little bit differently. And I, where was I going with that? Except that, you know, the, the, these principles are not what you use to define your passion. You, you just you tap in and you feel and you own it, and then you decide, this is where I'm going to go. And when you do that and fully, you know, fully uh, integrate that way of being and go through the discomfort of changing how you've been acting and the meaning you make out of things. I mean, this is what I do, obviously. I help people do this. It's, it's very difficult to do it by yourself because of your wiring. Once you reach the limits of your wiring and you want to, trans and you want to grow past that and you hit that discomfort, depending on your background and your wiring and the meaning you're making, you'll stop. That's why the personal development industry truly has like a 93% failure rate. And it's not because the information isn't good. It's because the people doing the transformation, taking on the transformation, do not stay consistent enough with the information to change the wiring in their brain in a permanent way so that they can be a different way and get different results. Yeah, and that makes sense. Um, we're going to take a short break. When we come back with Bob, we want to get into the details of this program. And um, Bob's going to tell us how we can make this work for us. And uh, we'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Nice. You don't know? Is this I, I don't know who this Bob, is. I Bob, know the do you song. recognize this? Uh, this ukule Higher fine ukulele playing? Entire life. Yeah. <laughs> okay, where did you even get that? <laughs> oh, we it got it. It sounds like you might know. We got it, it at like the like Hotel California, Bob. That's, That's where we right. got it. That's right. That was a uh, beautiful <laughs> ukulele playing by the uh, Bob, Dole, uh, Bob Doyle show. Yeah. Thank you, you know. very much. Uh, that was confronting. <laughs> you know, no, thank Bob. you. That's awesome. Bob has many talents. You got to check out the Bob Doyle show, by the way. It's on YouTube. He does uh, voiceovers, impressions, uh, virtual U reality stuff. Ukulele it's, playing. Ukulele playing. It's really entertaining. You should definitely stop by the Bob Doyle show to check that out. Um, anyway, welcome back to Understanding CBD. Hello there, Max Sobel. Hello there, Stephen Wellman. And uh, we're talking with C about CBD and mindset with uh, none other than Bob Doyle, CEO of Boundless Living. Uh, best known for his contribution to the movie The Secret. And the book. And the book, right. Um, so we were talking earlier about, uh, you know, the purpose of the law of attraction and, and, and all about And Bob's been coaching this stuff for a long time, right. expert. Um, what, how do we get started? What's the start of this process? Uh, people know they need, they need help. Yeah. So here, the, the approach that I'm taking now is to help everybody understand their starting point. So I have been, like you said, coaching this stuff for 20 years, and I've sort of, realize that there are types 
certain personality types uh, when it comes to personal transformation, the way that a person takes on transformation. And these types, while there's nothing inherently wrong with these types, there are aspects or traits of the type which tend to stop people at some point. So when we can identify what your personality type is when it comes to transformation, then you become aware of how your wiring works so that you can then catch yourself and choose other things because that's the core of the work that we do is help you become aware of when you are in autopilot in such a way that it is stopping you from moving forward the way that you want to so that you can learn to become aware in the moment, conscious, present, timeless, judgeless, and say, hey, I'm in my autopilot mode. I'd like, to, I'd like to do this instead. And there's a whole process we go through to prepare you for that. But the first step is understanding where you start. So I know I shared with you the transformation personality type quiz that we have online. It's about a minute. And it tells you what your personality or your transformation personality type is. And then from there, you get feedback on, you know, how it might be stopping you. And generally, people nod their heads and go, yeah, that's me. And then ways that you can now get around that. And, of course, you know, how you can be assistive in that process. Bob, is there a way to cheat on the quiz? Not on this one. Well, you could lie. Yeah, and I don't think that would help that you much if you tried. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, no cheating on this quiz, right? You wouldn't want to. So the outcomes of this personality types, uh, how many personality types are there? I mean, I know some people that have many personalities, more oh, yeah. than you could probably count. But when you group them together... <laughs> This is, this is strictly for personal transformation, and these are my types, and I got four of them. Hmm. You know, I'm sure I could break them up into others, but these are the main ones, and the, feature, the, the traits of those four are distinct enough that people can definitely easily recognize themselves. Okay, gotcha. So there's four types. Now, Max and I did the quiz. I think we told mm-hmm. you this. We did the quiz. Um, which one do you want to talk about first? Do you want to talk about me or Max? Oh, I want to talk about you first. All right, all right. So... Thanks for choosing me. Um, and I took the quiz, and I the results for me and my personality personality type is a seeker. Mm-hmm. Very what is, common. What does that uh, What does that mean? I'm common. So the seeker means that's right. You're common. Sorry. <laughs> you know, what it means is a seeker generally is going from program to program, approach to approach, coach to coach, teacher to teacher, trying to find the one that actually works for them. And they get very excited about the one they're in. Oh, my God, it's got this and this and this. And I got heard about these testimonials. And they said this and there's this tool. And you get in there and it's the week. And then and it feels good at first. And then you start getting up against your wiring because you're growing. And you start getting uncomfortable. And then, oh, look, there's another program that promises easier results. I'm going to go over here now and try that out for a while. And the same thing happens. You get to the point where you reach the discomfort. And now you want something else that's a little bit easier. So while there's nothing... What it says about this ego, the good thing is you're really committed to your personal growth. You really want to be the best you can be. However, because it's, it's because rewiring takes time and consistency and persistence over and over and over again, you can't just keep bailing and trying another thing because you literally erase your results. Any of the neural pathways that were formed, you know, will you stop giving them energy, they stop growing. So it's, it's important that you kind of stick with something so that you can get the wiring in place so that it becomes effortless to be who you want to be. Hmm. It seems like a psychic, you know? You know so much about me, I almost feel violated He's here. not wrong. He's, He's not, not. I mean, just knowing you personally, I can see some of those aspects just in our day-to-day. You know? Yeah, and yeah. you know, and I, I am aware of it, yeah. and it is a challenge in my knowing myself to make sure that I'm uh, and identifying these situations when they come up and, and making sure I don't get uh, sidetracked and, and get so distracted like... Yeah, yeah. So the thing about the seeker personality is the seeker, I think it would be, I bet you, you would feel better if you just found the thing and got the transformation, right? So who would you have to be to just say, I'm, I'm, I'm a person who sticks with this till the end, because I know that this works and I'm going to, I'm going to keep, you know, who would you need to be? What are the results you want? These are the things I have people look at, because you have to get really emotionally invested in this transformation. Like when we learned to walk, uh, we failed a lot of times. But we didn't quit and say the universe doesn't want this from me, apparently. We just kept going because it was it was non-negotiable. We're going to learn to walk. We're going to learn to talk. We're going to learn to eat. We're going to learn whatever. And so we go through the discomfort. But when it comes to personal transformation, it's like for some reason it falls into some different category. And now it better work in three days, seven days, 21 days, whatever the program promised. Otherwise, it doesn't, you know, it's no good. No, it's the same thing. Learning to be another person is just like learning a new language. Consistency, practice etc. And then it happens. 
Hmm. Similar to the way the cannabis plant is, by the way. You have to take it consistently, and you can't expect quick results. But I like that. I like that analogy. I like how we have brought that together. So mm-hmm. what about me, Bob? I am a wizard, apparently. I know a lot of wizards, too, especially in the law of attraction conversation. Okay. The, the wizards tend to ease into the magical thinking aspect of this thing. And magical thinking, as described by psychiatrists, psychiatry in general, basically means that you believe that something will happen without your input, without your physical input. Like you're going to put something out there and have it. Now, look, here's the thing. Yes, that can happen on an energetic level. But if you focus on that and waiting for the magic, then there's a little bit of responsibility that you're taking. So the problem with a lot of wizards is they don't take enough action. Mm. They're waiting for the universe to just do everything for them. And it's not like every wizard does nothing, but, but it is that sort of there's the trust and faith in the universe, which is fine, but you really need to have trust and faith in yourself in your own ability to stay consistent because we are the universe. We're part of it, right? So it's not like us and then the universe, and we're just waiting for the universe to do our bidding, which is the way that a lot of people frame this, you know, and that's, and that contributes to the magical thinking. So what we want to understand is that, yeah, there's all kinds of wonderful magic going on behind the scenes with energy and vibration, et cetera. As we're being this new person that we're being and taking that action that's consistent with this, yes, the law of attraction is at work to bring you the situations and circumstances that are in alignment with who you're being, but you still got to take action on those things as that person. So, yeah, so what I'm getting from that is that you have to, I, it's good that I have this belief that there's some greater good, that there's some greater universe sort of, you know, stepping in and helping me. But apparently I have to kick myself in the eh uh-uh to be able to, to, to move that a little bit forward a little bit faster, right? I suppose. But, and this is the thing about like kicking yourself in the eh uh-uh or whatever, or working hard. You got to, you, you need to watch your own language because if you set it up, as I got to kick myself in the ass or whatever it is, or this is going to be hard, or this is going to take a long time, or I guess then you're just reinforcing sort of feelings that probably aren't exactly what you want to feel, unless you just really, really enjoy that feeling. It's just about being consistent and persistent and keeping your eye on the prize. Yeah. You know, like, why am I doing this? I mean, you, I'm sure you know so much about you know, success and transformation in life is knowing your why, whether it's weight loss or any of this. Why am I doing this? Why am I going through this discomfort? Why will I not stop in the face of everything trying to tell me to stop? Because if, when you're really locked into why and who you're going to be and what your life is going to be as a result of being that, then you can become unstoppable. And you, and you realize that all the obstacles that are going to show themselves because as the transformation, you get to choose how you're going to respond you move through them. You move through them instead of stopping like most people historically do. You move through them. And if you can't do it by yourself, which most people can't, you got to get support so that you can remember why you're doing this and have the accountability and have the tools and everything you need to get through it because it is not necessarily it's going to be a walk in the park, just like walking and all those other things I, I gave an example for. Yeah. You know that's it's interesting and and something I wanted to I want to really dig into that you mentioned and corrected Max on is the words he's using and how and, and I'm really interested in your answer to this is how do you differentiate thoughts from feelings because you think something but are you feeling the same thing is there the thought inspires the feeling okay can you talk you have, have a thought and then and then that thought you access this database of your entire life. And all those emotional connections to that thought show up and have a chemical reaction, then you have a feeling. So if you're if you're thinking about winning the lottery, um, yeah, some people are going to get excited. Some people are going to feel hopeless. Some people are going to feel like it'll never happen to me. Some people can't wait to get. I mean, it's just totally different for everybody. Gotcha. That makes sense too. So then, more. so then when you you're the feeling then becomes what what makes you one personality than another, it differentiates people, how they're going to react to that thought of winning the lottery or um, whether it's a scary thing or something else. So, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Bob, did, does anybody make any mistakes? Like, what are the mistakes people make once they find out this personality type? Quitting. That's the only mistake. So not sticking with it. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, like going back to your old patterns. Not getting support, I mean, that, that's, that's really, people think, and this is one of the things that, you know, the secret in all, in, in all the good that it did, it definitely contributed to the magical thinking, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we got a genie in that movie. <laughs> you did. Right, so, so, so there's, there's under, I understand why a lot of people have that, that look at the law of attraction, but I also have been dealing with those people now for a really long time and understanding how that, 
has made it difficult for a lot of people. Because, look, you know, I didn't grow up in a metaphysical or new age anything. My mom was a teacher. I was as skeptical and analytical as, the, as, as anybody. And so when this whole concept came to me, you know, early in my sort of origin story, there was a lot of internal, like, can I, am I going to buy this? What is, you know, so I needed the science piece. Like, I needed to know that this was a thing and not a concept mm-hmm. for me to be able, able to see any result with it and take action consistent with it. Hmm. So, um, so the other personality types, Max, you're, uh, uh, Mrs. Mailsack did, it, did the quiz also, right? That's right. My wife took it. She's a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. What do you I got think one of those in my life, too. Okay. So Any basically, advice? A, people pleaser, yeah, a people pleaser does really well in transformation until they start getting input from the outside. And the thing about transformation is, you know, we, everybody who's in our life right now is there because of who we've been being. Like, we've attracted them or whatever. We resonate with them, and they're in our life. And as soon as we start to take on something else, change our vibration, whatever, stay, take different action, etc., the other people who are in our life currently, may, they may have a big problem with it. They may feel threatened themselves, you know, whatever. It brings up their stuff, and then they start telling you why you can't do this or this won't work or giving you, in, 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 in some way or another, give you a hard time or make you feel bad about your even taking on this transformation. And so those people tend to pull back. That's when they stop. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to upset my parents. I don't want to upset my spouse. I don't want this relationship to end, etc. And so they sacrifice themselves and their vision and their dream to make other people comfortable. And you hear that, Mrs. Mailsack? A lot of people do it. Okay, you got to step up, Mrs. Mailsack. You don't have to sacrifice your dreams to make everybody else comfortable. That's good. That's insightful. Perfect. You know, and uh, Linda did the, the test. She came up with me as the same as a seeker. Um, what's the fourth, um, the fourth one that we, we haven't found yet? People pleaser, wizards, oh, the skeptic. Mm-hmm. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. That was what I was. You know, it's like skepticism is, there's, there's healthy skepticism, right? It keeps you out of trouble. It keeps you from making stupid decisions and so on. But when you define yourself as a skeptic, and like everything has to be analyzed. You have to figure out why something won't work first before you figure out why it does work. Guess what? You're going to find the answers you're looking for. That's the thing about the universe and your brain. If you ask the questions, you're going to get the answer. So if you find out, if you ask, why isn't this working? You're going to get a bunch of not working. What you want to ask is, why is this so easy? Hmm. Because then you'll get those answers. Love it. it. It is so much about the questions you ask. Your brain, et cetera, will tap into the infinite intelligence, and you'll get some answers. But you got to ask the questions that are going to empower you, not you're asking. So many people are asking the wrong questions. Mm, very, very brilliantly said, Bob. Um, now, we, uh, we're at the end of the show now. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that you can tell people how to take this quiz. Where, where do they go? Super easy. So it's the Transformation Personality Type Quiz. So it's tptquiz.com. TPTquiz.com. If you're on the YouTube channel, we'll put that up on the screen. If you're on the uh, radio show, it's TPTquiz.com. Bob, thanks so much for coming in and sharing your wisdom with us today, as well as your musical talents. It was my pleasure, and thank you. Bob, it was a pleasure having you on. You are our first movie star, and and thank you for joining us. 